Hello. Today I'm uh, doing a tune-up on my lawnmower. Um, I bought it July of uh, 2006 or 2007. I'm not really sure. I just uh, replaced the battery because it was bad. It was getting bad, I should say. It was a little hard cranking. And uh, I'm going to throw in a picture of a, 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 what it looks like. It's a Briggs & Stratton Intech. It's a Craftsman mower, but it was actually built by uh, Husqvarna with a hydrostat transmission. And I set this up on top dead center today. Uh, the instruction says to uh, bring it up on compression stroke by turning the uh, uh, engine in and looking at the uh, uh, flywheel from the top in a clockwise direction. And, and that's what I did, but but it also says to um, do your setting when the piston is a quarter inch past top dead center on the downward stroke, which I don't I don't think I'm uh, too far away from there. But there may be a compression release on the cam, so so I may want to uh, double check that when I go back with the uh, new gasket and the spark plug when it comes in. Now, I just wanted to bring that to your attention because this is the first time I've done this procedure on, on this particular type of engine. And I wanted to uh, share my experience with it. And, well, um, another, another thing I, I, I put in this video is there's a, a, a longer version of oil filter that I'm using. And I'll give you the part number for that. And it's about uh, uh, twice as long and it, it cleans a little better. And uh, the other thing I mentioned in here is, is that I run synthetic oil in it. Uh, I happen to be an AMS oil dealer, so I use their product, and it's it's had their oil in it since, since it was new. And, and there wasn't, wasn't a bit of uh, uh, deposits, uh, burn oil, or anything inside that cover, as you'll see in the video. Well, uh, well let's get to it, and, and you'll see exactly how this is done. And uh, there is some torques torque settings on, on these but uh, I think if you set them uh, uh, set screws with like a nut driver then, then they'll be tight enough um, I broke them loose with a nut driver and I think the spec on it was 85 inch pounds and uh, that's really not a lot of torque if, if, if you're strong one handed if you put a ratchet on it you might uh, break it or something I, not, I didn't want to go there there's also a torque setting for the cover. I think it was six inch pounds, which doesn't seem very much. But that's another thing I, I, I just want to bring to your attention. And uh, I, actually, the spark plug I ordered uh, fits a Bentley, believe it or not. It fits a Bentley and a Volkswagen. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. But I ordered an NGK spark plug with the, the, the V group design. I want to see if it uh, runs any different with that compared to the uh, standard uh, champion or whatever it was. Yeah, champion. I got one right here. That's what, what was in it from the factory, but I, I just wanted to try the engine K because I really like the, the, the way they burn. So, let's get busy with this project. Okay. Today we're going to adjust the valves on this Craftsman lawnmower. It's a Briggs & Stratton Intech engine. I've had it since uh, July of 2006 or 2007, I'm not sure. And the valve cover's never been taken off of this, and I'm sure it has at least 120 to 150 hours on it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start doing a tune-up on it, and, and I just wanted to uh, show you how I'm going about doing it. I do have the instructions, and I'll show you a couple of other things I've done to the mower along the way. Well, let's get started. I've already taken the spark plug out and uh, loosen the cover to save a little time.
Okay, what I just did is, is I've got both valves closed on the compression stroke and I used a screwdriver down the spark plug hole to make sure the piston is at top dead center. I got my uh, deluxe feeler gauges here. The spec on it's between five and seven thousandths on both, and it looks pretty good to me, considering it's uh, uh, never been touched since it left the factory. I've got these two gauges, they're uh, six and a seven thousandths. I don't know if it'll show up on here or not. I don't think it will. But they're a six and seven thousandths, I don't have a five. This is actually a set for diesel trucks. And you can buy a, a separate gauge that has like a four and a five and then a six and an eight uh, made for a motorcycle, which would be ideal for these. I got you zoomed in here, so you should should be able to see what I'm doing here. The exhaust is right on seven and, and the intake is about five. The, the six is a little bit uh, tight going into it. And it really doesn't even need adjusted. And uh, I run synthetic oil on this thing and, and uh, even uh, mowing on a hot day yesterday it was 87 and, and the, the air coming off of the head just feels warm when I got done after running it for an hour. So I don't want to uh, I don't even know know that it needs set. Um, let me show you the, the, the filter upgrade I did while I'm here. This is a long filter right here is what I put on it. It goes to a, like a twin cylinder Onan. And this is the one it calls for. And uh, the number for this long one you can get at a Napa store. It's a, a 1348. And it's got a tighter micron radiant than the uh, factory one. Uh, that's just a little tip I can give you. And uh, I changed the uh, fuel filter here. This is just a strainer screen. I put actual, an actual paper one on it and a shutoff valve. I don't have a shutoff valve here or I'd show it to you. But it's just a quarter turn to cut the fuel off if you need to uh, work on the carburetor or something. These are the actual uh, instructions from Briggs and Stratton. And it basically tells you how to do it and it tells you how to adjust it. There's a set screw right in the center that, that locks the screw once you adjust it. And uh, the settings I have are, if 
five to seven, five to seven on both intake and exhaust. And this is the uh, model number I had off the engine. And you'll find those uh, numbers right on the uh, side of that cover I had removed. And uh, they're kind of hard to read. You might have to take some scotch bright or sandpaper, just clean it up enough, enough that you can read, read them because they get a little bit rusted. And uh, I think I'm going to make, make a setting on here, then, then I'll be back. Okay, I've got these adjusted. It, the set screw in the center is like a T20 star bit. And... Uh, I found that, that if you wiggle the, the rockers a little bit and uh, it, it can affect the, the way the, the feeler gauge reads and I've got them set right on 6000 with light drag and let me uh, zoom in and, and show you. You also notice that it's very clean in there, there there's no like uh, burned oil or anything not even in the cover and that's, that's one of the uh, benefits of running that synthetic wool. Here we go, I'll show, show you these uh, uh, feeder gauges now. And remember, I gotta wiggle these to, to uh, until I get light drag on them. And I've, I've got them set right now. The uh, second one is a 7,000th, and it uh, fits a little bit tight. And the, the, uh, the first one I use is a .06 inches, and it, it's got light drag on it, and sometimes you gotta, you gotta just kind of like jiggle it and, uh, to, to help it get in there. And then it, it, it's, it's pretty close. But the range on it is five to seven, so, so we're good right now. I just gotta uh, tighten that set screw down a little, little better, and then, uh, uh, put it on. I'm still waiting on the gasket to come in. But uh, thanks for watching. I forgot to mention I'm wearing my new shirt and, and it, it really gets a lot of attention when I'm in town. I, I think that's pretty funny. <laughs>